Watch this. I want to go from there. Proverbs 16. You said 16, Bishop? Please. Okay. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse ver 18. And verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. And a haughty spirit. Pride goeth before destruction. So you already know, when you identify that you have a spirit of pride on you, and every man knows himself, know it's setting you up for destruction. The end result of that pride will be, I hope you understand that, the end of that pride will be destruction. And what? Verse 18, and a hearty spirit before a fall. Jump on down to verse 25. Verse 25, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And that's what pride does. It makes you seem that you're right. It will convince you. That's why he says the heart is desperately wicked. But when you have brothers around you and sisters that's there, those are your checks and balances right there. Those are your checks and balances. You cannot tell me that you find yourself, and I always do this, this year like this. Happy Sabbath, happy feast. And the next year, can't stand his guts. He was just cool the other day. The Bible's a playing field. What, what, what happened? <laughs> how, did, how did it get from that? Somebody got pride. Somebody ain't right. How could me and Captain Isaac be at odds if we both believe the same book? How can it be? How can it be some kind of confusion? It's a simple solve. Hey, you did this. Oh, you did that. Okay, cool. Let's just stop that. Let's get this. Okay, fine. Only pride. Wherever there's confusion, there's every evil work. Somebody don't want to be right. I just took a picture with you six months ago. What did he do or I do that me and him are at odds? Humble. So verse 25 again. Verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. But the end where are, are the ways of death. So the end result of it, you're going to sell your life because of pride. You're going to lose everything because of it. Pride. And then you wonder why you stumble at the word. You don't understand judgment. You're confused. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes real quick. Ecclesiastes, um, uh, what verse was that? Uh, we read uh, 9 and 9. Let's read, let's read 9 and 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 9. Live joyfully with the wife who thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. That's why he said that. He came back and said, man, y'all live joyful with the wife of thy youth. That was the portion I was giving to you under the sun. Read on. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Right. Whatever you find your hand to do, do it with your might. That's like you putting your hand to this plow and looking back. You grabbed onto the, all of you, I hope you all know, you all grabbed onto this plow to build. This ain't no turning back. You understand, turning away from this means you damning yourself. And here some people will convince themselves, I'm not leaving the truth. Riddle me this, help me understand. Name, by show of hand, Who's been in this truth within this congregation more than five years out here? Five, five years, five years. Name one person that has been here. There's no problem.
just gets up and say, Shalom, everybody. I want to thank you for all you've done. But I'm moving on. Nobody does that. When people leave, it's because something ain't right. And there you go. You leave because you think you're right. Well, if you're right, wouldn't you stay to help the body and help Bill and help fix the problem? Shepherds, uh, shepherds don't leave. Hirelings flee. Right. Maybe you are the solution. What makes you think you should leave? Because it seems right in your mind. Memo, don't listen to you. <laughs> don't listen to yourself. Something you want to say? No, sir. Okay. Well, what's this? Um, uh, same chapter. Verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to all. All of us have to, it, it, this race is not for the swift. This ain't how much, I'm telling you right now, this truth ain't about how much you know. I'm telling you that from now. It's how much you apply. Y'all can mark your Bible in yellow for this, Pink for that, fine point pens, you go a little warm up by all the tools and your pocket protectors and everything here, and you got your Bible high up, look like this, and when problems happen, it's what you do. And you're in your feelings. Do you know what I'm highlighting you doing your Bible? What you're doing is you're preparing for the exam that you're about to take. And then when the exam comes, you close the book. It's an open book test. Just open it back up. And what it says to do, that's what you do. What it says not to do, here's the key. Don't do it. You close and go into your feelings. That's, that's nigger pride. It's nigger pride. I feel, I think, I was wronged, I was this. Christ was crucified, and he didn't deserve it. He took it. Please spare me what your problem is. I was going to say, big man, size 18 foot, and he said, my feelings are hurt. Nigger, please. You better pee sitting down. It says, uh, nor the battle for the strong, neither yet bread for the wise, nor riches for men of understanding, nor yet favor for men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. You know what it means when time and chance happen to them all? We all have that time, that lifeline. And I'm telling you, for some reason, today might be that for some of you. This is that lifeline right now coming out to you to help shake you up. This is your chance to say, you know what? God was talking to me. I know I've been in classes before, and I'm here classes going on, and I'm like, oh, gosh. You can't put the priest of the better together. Certainly you must be talking about me. How do you know? That's your lifeline. That's when you have that 1 Corinthians 13. Examine yourselves. Know ye not your own selves? Don't you know? Don't you know what you're battling, what's inside of you? Examine yourself. These scriptures are that lifeline. Time and chance, everybody have an opportunity. Read that in verse 4. Verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. There is what? There is hope. We don't. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. It's saying while you're alive, there's hope to fix it. What would stop you from fixing it? Pride. Pride would make you stop you. And you know what pride, you know why pride would stop you from fixing it? Jump back one chapter, verse 11, 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's why. Because judgment is not executed speedily, pride set in. You think you can get away with it. I guarantee you, if judgment, if you do right now and judgment is right after, that pride stuff will go out the window so fast. Men are set to do evil, to justify themselves. 
will not turn away from their sins. Watch this. Sirach 23. Verse 2. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 23, and verse 2. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over mine heart? Who? Read on. That they spare me not for mine ignorances, and it pass not by my sins. What? Right, that's what we want. Oh, start with verse 1. I'm sorry. Uh, Sirach, chapter 23, verse 1. O Lord, Father and Governor of all my whole life. Leave me not to their counsels, and let me not fall by them. To whose counsels? To your own counsels. Don't lead me to my own mind, Lord, please. And don't join me to a person with the same problem I have, because together we both are going to convince ourselves that we right. People be leaving, they be leaving out here in twos and threes, and they all get together, and they're gone and they're bitter. And they watch the videos. <laughs> Negro, you smitten with madness. Psycho. You leave and you stand back and you sit and watch the videos. And, be, <laughs> and then you get your Bible and try to find precepts to explain everything or re-explain everything. You shall know them by their fruits. It says what? Read that one more time, please. O oh Lord, Father and Governor of all, my whole life. Leave me not to their counsels, and let me not fall by them. Read on. Who will set scourges over my thoughts? Who will set scourges over my thoughts? Read on. And the discipline of wisdom over my heart, that they spare me not for my ignorances. That's what you want. You don't want to be spared for your ignorances. You need to be told, hey, bro, what you doing, man? Yo, sis, what you doing? No, don't do that. You're destroying yourself. You understand that? Read on. That they spare me not for my ignorances, and it pass not by my sins. Read. Lest my ignorances increase, and my sins abound to my destruction. And I fall before my adversaries, and my enemies rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mercy. Look what he's praying for, man. Please, read on. O oh Lord, Father and God of my life, give me not a proud look. Pride. Don't give me a, don't give me a spirit of pride. Read on. But turn away from thy servants always a haughty mind. Please turn away that haughty mind from me, God. Give me a mind that I'm, listen to me, all of us in this truth, we better have a mind that is pliable. That means bending, willing to change, conform, adapt. God's laws are straight, strict, unmovable. We have to form ourselves into that, not that form around us. Oh, I'm doing that wrong? Okay, I'm over here. I'm done. Let me get this right right here. Okay, I humble down, down, down here. I got to stand up here. I'm just moving. I just want to make sure I can find how I can fit into the mold that's set. A nigga want to break the mold and remake the mold. That's not how it works. Such gorgeous over my mind. Give me a conscience, Lord. Don't let me listen to myself. Don't let me have a proud mind where I can't be. T and you will tell them, and they still won't get it. They still won't get it. Because their God, Satan, got them, and they bound. Everybody understand it? Yes, sir. Oh, cool. All right, good. All praises. Let's read on. Turn away from me, vain hopes and concupiscence. You know, vain hopes, lies. Lie. Turn away from me, lies. Read on. And thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee. And you're going to hold up them that is pliable. That's moldable, that's conformable, that's willing to change so we can measure up to the full stature of Christ. All of us got to be like that. Hey, yo, I'm sorry. Yo, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. If we both move on like that, no, nah, no, nah, I'm sorry. Brother, I understand. I'm good now. We're good. Okay, thank you. Let's move. Can I tell you something sometimes about, about apologies? Apology is not really for the person who you're apologizing for. Because if I stole from Captain Isaac and I say I'm sorry, that don't really fix that I stole from him. He's still out of what he's out of. I give him back what he want. 
That apology is more so for you, that you're identifying you got a problem. That's why when you go to, the, to, to AA, you've been going there for 15 years, you get up and say, hi, my name is Chuck and I'm an alcoholic. You may have had a drink in 10 years, but you're making sure you identify that you never go too far away that you could slip. You always keep in mind that I got to be conscious of my actions. So when you apologize, that's, a more, that's more so for you to verbally acknowledge or you sit there, know you're wrong, and you won't answer. When I say I should be laughing, I'm like, why? He must not understand these scriptures. You sit there with that face like, I'm not saying yay or nay. I'm just going to sit there. You already said it to me. I, I, didn't know what you, I know what you're saying. You're just not saying with words. This is what you're saying to me. Hold on, Mike. I ain't telling you nothing, nigga. <laughs> That's what I see. Oh, boy. Hey, Bishop. Can yeah, I, go ahead. Scripture? Yeah, please. Uh, I'm going to read uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 35, because what you said was heavy. As is very dangerous when you convince yourself that you don't deal with a certain spirit. Uh, we always got to make sure that we are aware of what we deal with, even if we've overcome in a few years or however long it's been. We always got to remember that we all deal with something. Um, this book is 2nd Ezra, chapter 8, verse 35. It says, For in truth there is no man among them that be born, but he hath dealt wickedly. And among the faithful there is none which hath not done amiss. So just like we're reading about the forefather, King Solomon, what did he do? Wisest man that ever lived on the face of the earth, but even he went off. So it's always important for us to remind ourselves that we all deal with something. Very good point. So don't think none of us was great as and, and Solomon, and he made mistakes. David, I mean, it's just you got to be able to humble. And sometimes, like with David, the Most High broke him down for him to acknowledge it. Trust me, at the end of Solomon's life, Solomon said in Sirach, man, I should have already taught that. That book itself, you can say, not Sirach, Ecclesiastes, and explain. Solomon laid it on a line in Ecclesiastes. At the end of it, he said, man, let me tell you something. The whole duty of man is fear God and keep his commandments. Because he's going to bring everything into judgment. Those that are, I'm a, you know, I could butcher scripture. That are in secret. Get that real quick because I'm going to butcher it. I know what it means. I just can't say it. What would you say, Bishop? I'm sorry. Sirach, tw uh, Ecclesiastes 12. The whole conclusion. Yes, sir. There's one word. The secret is the word I want. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. What do, you think he's, I'm sorry, what do you think he's saying that for? He's coming full circle and tell you, man, this is how it goes down. I'm telling you, I've done it all. I've seen it all. I've been there. You can never do more than me. I had all wisdom, and I pissed it off with the stuff I did. And here's the whole duty of man. To do what? Fear God and keep his commandments. He said, man, listen to me. I'm telling you. Now, here's a wise man. Learn from somebody else's mistakes or learn from your own. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So whether every secret thing, if it's good or evil, Solomon is telling you it's going to come into judgment. So while he's writing stuff, he already told you, man, I didn't live joyfully with the wife of my youth, man. I made some, some mistakes on how I dealt. I'm telling you, you know what? I, I was an old foolish king that wouldn't be admonished. And now I got to live through the effects of my decisions. And I'm just letting you know, man, you no know, real talk. Just keep the commandments. But that's the whole dude, man. And every work is going to be brought into judgment, either secret or not. That's for us to realize, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let a spirit of pride get on me where I can't be told nothing. I'm not going to allow that to be me because Solomon told me it just doesn't work. All right. Where did we leave off at, uh, officer? We, uh, you was in Ecclesiastes before. Uh, let's drop that. I'm going to wrap it up in a second. A um, couple of things I want to read real quick. Um, First Timothy's four. First Timothy's four, one and two. 
This is the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's some people because of their pride, their conscience is seared. It's in the last day. Some people's conscience is going to be seared with a hot iron. It don't matter what you say to them, they will not see it. Who's ever had a white tea before and you burnt it? It don't matter how much you try to wash it out. That's why some people, they're just appointed to death. You just got to let them be. Bye. Your mind is gone. No fixing you. You're a broken toy. Bye-bye. Got to go. Their mind are said with a hot iron. Jeremiah 13. Don't let that be you. And Lord forbid it's me. 13.9. Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. Damn. Read on. This evil people which refuse to hear my words. Pride. Which walk in the imagination of their heart. Pride. And walk after other gods. <laughs> to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. For he said, he say, you're no use to me because of your pride. Read on. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused thee to cleave unto me, the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory, but they would not hear. Damn. He said, I told you to be a glory to me for name and glory, yet they would not listen. They gave up to be called the sons of God and get all the blessings and glory that it's have to offer. Why didn't we accept that? Just like Solomon, we wanted to follow you. We wanted to go to folly. And God said, damn, you that prideful, I'm punishing you, and you still don't want me? You will not hear me? And I chose you? And I lent you your life? You that prideful, that you won't humble to me, then death. Read on. Verse, verse 11. Oh, I dropped that. That's good. Yes, I'm sir. about to wrap it up. Uh, give me uh, Jeremiah 17 and 1. Because we was reading that earlier in Jeremiah 17 and 4. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart. And upon the horns of your altars, whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. So it says, the sins of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point of a diamond. That's why when sin comes, we bang that thing down because it's so graven, and engraved, etched in our minds. We have to continue trying to beat that thought out of our people. Let go of that prideful spirit. Let go of that, that arrogant spirit where you cannot be told. We're going to wrap it up. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. One more second. Eight thirteen. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. Right. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, to hate pride, to hate arrogancy, and an evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. A mouth that speak unadvisedly against what the scripture says. Here's a level of pride. Somebody sinned against you, Jerem, uh, Luke 17 said you must forgive. Well, I don't know if I can do that. I, I mean, I was really hurt, and, you know, my, you know, I don't understand. The Bible says you must forgive. Well, uh, you, you don't understand what happened to me. doesn't matter. The Bible says you must forgive. Well, that's easy for you to say. The Bible says you must forgive. It says you must forgive. But, but okay, man, you're actually, bye. You, you're fading. You're fading away from this. This is not for you. This is not for you. Okay. James 1. We're going to wrap it up.
I'm sorry, give me one second. My Bible's ripped to bed. James 1. Amen. I'm sorry, James, not James 1. James 4, 4 1. James chapter 4 and verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? Ye so, so, so sometimes you find he's war and fighting amongst you because you're warring something inside of you. Something is warring inside of you. So that's why sometimes we talk, we're like, what's going on with you, bro? What's going on, you sis? Why are you acting like that? There's something inside of you that is pushing you to behave a certain way. So when you see problems in the household with marriages and brothers, there's always a contention, something is wrong. Because why do I say that? Because in chapter 3, verse 17, it says what? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Right, because the wisdom up from above is first pure, it's gentle, it's easy to be entreated. The wisdom from God is easy to be entreated. Quick, fast, things that get solved. But whence cometh wars and fighting? Because there's something war inside of you where you cannot submit to what's being told. And that will be your destruction. So, Israel, I'm going to pause there. I pray that you receive something from today's class. Uh, stay tuned. Bishop will be on in a few. And Godspeed. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Is you. And finally, my brother, be strong enough.